Hello there again everybody, Boyd here with you and back with another update on our Mobius TOS Battlestar Galactica build. Um, things are moving along really nice on this kit. I've been planning the um, wiring and installing all the lighting since the last video on the rest of the ship. I've got the uh, landing bays pretty much all done here. They've been fully assembled and uh, are primed and ready for paint. I had to think about how I was going to run the wires through. I've got quite a few wires for that uh, sequential lighting on the floors that needed to come into the... Uh, main part of the ship i decided to mount the control board right here in the center section that there's a nice you know plenty enough room in there and it's nice and out of the way um, so i can terminate all my wires coming off of the landing bays with a fairly short run of wire right now they're kind of long and messy like they usually are until you get them all installed and get them all uh, trimmed up but uh, originally i planned on bringing those through through one of these arched leg supports here uh, that attach to the landing base from the main hull but then I realized on the bottom there's a fourth strut that's kind of flat that goes straight across. So I just had to do some minor um, grinding on the tips of that to get it opened up and then um, be able to pass wire through there. They've got this mount that goes on the bottom of the hull that attaches on this. Uh, I'll grab this other part right here, which I just did some light blocking on. But this other part right here is the very bottom. This piece basically goes on the top like that. And then your mounting rod comes up in, and this is on the bottom side of the ship. It basically goes to cover up this area right here. So my power will be coming in up through the base right into here and uh, connect to all the wiring that I'm going to have to power up the board. Then you can see I've got the uh, LED strips to light up my fiber optics down in the forward section here. All my holes have been drilled for my, where my fiber optics are going to go in. I'm just going to be using little short stubs of fiber optic about that long and then uh, just cutting them out and, and gluing them in, you know, pushing them in. So the model is going to get all painted before I even put any of that in. I can just, uh, and then actually after I light the model up, it'll actually help me to uh, find where all the little holes are, or little pinpoints of light will be there. And I'll just push the fiber optics in and with a little bit of uh, canopy glue and they'll be good to go. So... I'm routing the wires back from the front. I had to make a little notch here in the um, forward support area. That'll bring the wires back here. And then the same thing is going on in this area right in here. I've got my, uh, my LED strip running across to light the main engines. This is a bright white LED strip. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna diffuse those main, uh, the two big main engine ports. Those, um, they call in the kit to be lit in blue, but I was pretty sure I remembered those being just a plain kind of a bright white like a fluorescent light on the TV series so I went back and watched and that's what it looks like to me there's a third sort of auxiliary engine up here at the top that's got a little bit of red tint to it so I'll just use a little bit of Tamiya transparent red over that plastic lens that goes in here and then we'll get that looking sharp um, I do have the photo etch set for this kit so we're going to be putting that nice um, engine grill work in there and there's some other little details here and there that go on it but uh, so that's going to work out good. I'll just kind of set this on the top and you can see um, how that's going to line up. And our little grill goes in the back here. Just fits really well too. It snaps right in place. And you can see that I line the uh, LED strip up so that the uh, bulbs are equal on each side and centered. Then there'll be quite a bit of bright white light coming out of there. But like I said, I'll diffuse that with some white paint behind the... Um, plastic lens and then uh, a little bit of trans transparent to me a red brushed over that uh, center section there will give a little bit of uh, red light coming out of that so that's going to work pretty good now my client uh, requested that he wanted to have a couple of um, strobe lights on on the model now we all know that that's not canon on the battle star but that's uh, entirely his choice and you know we build them for the client so we build them like they want um, so what i did here is i've got uh, smds installed one here one here one here, one here on the inside. There'll be just little small pinpoints of blinking lights uh, that'll strobe. We've got one here at the very tip of the bow on the top and one at the tip of the bow on the bottom as well. Now, what I decided to do on that is that uh, I'll just simply put a separate switch. Uh, normally, we're just going to have one power-up switch on his base, which when you hit it, you know, it would turn everything on. But I'm going to install a second switch so that we can turn the, um, the strobes off and on. I can do that just by... Um, 
disconnecting the power to them. You know, they'll all be grounded in the same place. So I'll just have an interrupt for the ground and then they won't work when you have the button off and they'll work when you have it on. So that way, um, Robert can display this with, uh, either the lights flashing or not. And plus they'll have a kind of an extra fun switch to play with. And, um, so that way you can display it Canon or not. And, um, he can enjoy his, uh, his flashing navigation lights or look at it the way it appeared on the TV show either way. So that's a really simple fix. Um, so it's coming along really good. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to start um, assembling some of these pieces and getting it more into the shape of the hull and get the back all put together and everything here, get the um, landing bay pods attached, and we'll show you a look at the uh, model as it'll appear just before it's about ready for paint. I'll be right back with that. All right, you guys, I'm back with you again. I spent a couple hours um, getting the rest of the model put together here. I made sure everything's nice and straight and square. It's all been glued up, and um, I'm just going to let it sit now for a good 24 hours to let it cure up and get nice and uh, stable and hard so we don't have anything moving on us. I've still got a few small detail parts that need to go on there around the back part of the engine detail and some small little greelies and photo etch parts, but the main structure's all put together. I finished up um, terminating all the wires up inside here like I talked about, mounted the control board in there, so everything worked out really good there. We had plenty of room in that area. Um, you can see I've been doing some uh, light blocking on the forward half here with some black. This model has a lot of um, nooks and crannies in it, so spraying it with a can like I have been, it's it's been difficult to get those to all go away. The there's some you know recessed areas where the paint doesn't want to get down in there so the plan will be then is after I get this all finished up with my basic black I'll turn the lights down in the shop and I'll go around it with uh, some black paint in my airbrush and I'll turn the air pressure down a little bit that way I can get in really close spray it on and I'll get all those little areas covered up and we won't have to worry about you know pushing a whole lot of paint you just can't get really close with a can because you're just going to start getting massive runs and the paint's going to get way too thick so we'll get that figured out um, there are a few little gaps in the panels here and there where lights leaking out, which was to be expected. So I'll fix that um, before we put our final coat of paint, which will be our hull color, with this perfect plastic putty. This is really good. What I like to do is I take and um, thin it down with a little bit of water. I put a little bit of it in a, in a Dixie cup, thin it just enough to where my syringe will pick it up and still be able to push it back out. And I'll just go around all the nooks and crannies here that are leaking light. I'll look at it in low light. And just inject that in there and that'll uh, take care of the light leaks we can finish wiping up the excess that spills out or whatever with a, with a damp towel and that'll clean up really nice once it dries it's nice and thick and it blocks light really good so that'll take care of all the little gaps and everything and um, once we finish all that up it'll be ready for the uh, final hull color which is going to be a little bit of an off-white um, I'll finish up after that with a coat of sealer in clear that way it'll be ready for um, decals We'll do all the decal work and get all that squared away. And the very last thing we're going to be doing is um, going back and putting in all of our fiber optic little stubs. All we have to do is just push them in. Um, I'll show you the lighting. You can see we've got our little navigation lights working. Now, I ran my power wires and everything out the bottom, and I brought two extra wires out for that so those can be shut, you know, turned off and on with a switch like I talked about. I just wanted to have them on so you guys could see what they look like and where I put them. I think they actually look pretty good. Uh, you know, a ship that size probably should have some kind of marker lights on there, but I don't remember seeing any of the uh, ships in the series have any kind of blinking lights like that. But again, Robert can either have those on or off, whichever he chooses. So, but it's coming along really good. I've got to drill a couple more holes for window locations here on these sides. I made sure all my wiring and everything is out of the way so we don't nick that with a drill bit when we're doing that. Everything will be good. We've got our Raytheon lighting here which again, that'll get a lot dimmer once we um, start laying down our hull color. I'll um, turn it to the side here and you guys can see the, um, the engine lighting. We've got some really bright white light coming out of there right now. Those will get a little bit dimmer once I diffuse that lens. And then uh, we're gonna do the, that auxiliary engine in red there like I talked about. But here are the uh, sequencers working in the landing bays on both sides with our red lighting in the background. That's a nice little feature that's gonna look nice when this model's all done. And then um, I guess a little bit more towards the front here, you can see the uh, where the uh, lighting is gonna go for the fiber optics. Some of these look kind of twinkly right now because there's just raw light coming out of those. They'll look a lot more focused and sharp 
once the uh, fiber optics are in there. So it's coming along really good, you guys. Again, I'll just uh, have to let this sit. I want to do a little bit more in this video, but I've just got to let it sit overnight now and let it cure up before I can do anything else. Everything fit together really good on this. I don't have any complaints about the model at all. It worked out really nice. So just wanted to mention too that um, in the month of October coming up, I'm gonna be doing my annual Halloween build that I like to do every year. And this is a kit that I picked. This is the Polar Lights Haunted Manor. Play it again, Tom. Um, it's pretty cool. It's, it's a uh, neat, nice looking kind of a Gothic organ there with a guy there playing and the, it's got the action like the old Pirates of the Caribbean kits where the little guy kind of pops out the top there but I'm going to uh, when I do my version of this I'm going to make it look a little bit more old and dusty you know with some cobwebs on it and things like that and maybe add some lighting try to get these little candles lit up here on the top and a couple other things so that should be a lot of fun and then I've decided to uh, take part this year again in the uh, cancer awareness build I want to say a shout out to Bob Busking for uh, hosting that every year it's a very worthy cause and I've got a nice car kit picked out for that so October is going to be really busy. I'm going to be building this one, the car kit, and then in uh, November we're starting the big Titanic build. And then along the way I'm going to be coming back and finishing up the uh, Mobius Viper. You can just see him peeking out there. And then we've got to finish up the Aztec on the Discovery Enterprise. And I'm looking at a couple other kits, either this Romulan kit up here or the, uh, the new Galileo kit for some Star Trek stuff over the next couple of months. I've got a nice photo etch set for this and plan on doing some lighting and everything. So... That should be a lot of fun. Okay, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Having a blast building this uh, Battlestar. Bring back a lot of memories. I, I love the original TV show, especially the uh, ships. So this has been a lot of fun. And this is a much improved kit over the old uh, monogram version that I built up here on the channel a couple of years ago. So really fun to work on it. Okay, you guys. We'll call this one a wrap. Uh, we'll see you next time in a couple days. And we'll finish up um, doing the painting ceiling and decal work and then find uh, finally our fiber optics on this one see you next time everybody take care and happy modeling